Hey there, welcome back to AI Code King. What a coincidence. Just yesterday, we were talking about COG VLM, which is a Llama 3 vision model. But shortly after that video, Microsoft launched their new open source vision model under the Phi 3 model family. It's named Phi 3 Vision. Previously, a few days ago, Microsoft had launched their three smallest open source models named Phi 3. They were Phi 3 Mini, a 3.8 billion parameter model. Then there was a Phi 3 Small model, which was a 7 billion parameter model. And then there was a Phi 3 Medium model, which was a 14 billion parameter model. I have a video about all these models, so you can check them out on my channel if needed. But now, they have added a new model to this family, and that's called Phi 3 Vision. This model was released yesterday at the Microsoft Build 2024 conference. They launched multiple other things as well, like Copilot PCs and other things. But what concerns us is the Phi 3 Vision model. So, let's talk about it. Phi 3 Vision is a 4.2 billion parameter model, which means it is very lightweight. It is a multimodal model, which means you can upload your images, docs, and ask questions about it. The best part about this model is that it supports a 128K context limit, which is amazing for long conversations. As they say, it's a state-of-the-art open multimodal model built upon data sets that include synthetic data and filtered publicly available websites with a focus on very high-quality, reasoning-dense data, both on text and vision. Next, if we look at their architecture, we can see that it is basically based on the Phi 3 Mini model with an image encoder, connector, and a projector. As I already said, it has a context length of 128K, which is amazing. It has been trained on 500 billion tokens of data including vision and text data. It has been trained with 512 NVIDIA H100 GPUs. One such GPU costs $30,000. Just saying. This training data includes publicly available documents filtered rigorously for quality, selected high-quality educational data, and code. It's also beating GPT-4 vision in multiple benchmarks. So, Let's look at the benchmarks. The first one is the MMMU benchmark, which is a comprehensive, heterogeneous, interleaved, and expert or AGI level benchmark. It is basically a data set of questions that are spread across different topics. This benchmark is only for multimodal models. In the MMMU benchmark, it scores 40.2, while Claude 3 Haiku scores 40.7. Gemini 1.0 Pro scores 42, and GPT-4 V scores 55.5. So, it cannot score as much as GPT-4 V in this benchmark, but overall, it is pretty great, considering its smaller size. I mean, all the other ones we are comparing it to are probably above 150 billion parameters, while Phi 3 is only 4 billion parameters. Anyway, the next benchmark is the MMBench benchmark, which is also an all-rounder question data set. In this benchmark, it scores 80.5, while Claude 3 Haiku scores 62.4, and Gemini 1.0 Pro scores 80.0, and GPT-4 V Turbo scores 86.1. So, in this benchmark, it beats Claude 3 Haiku and Gemini, which is pretty amazing. The next benchmark is the Science QA benchmark. As the name suggests, this is a scientific benchmark. In this benchmark, it throws everyone out of the water by scoring 90.8, while Claude 3 Haiku scores 72.0, Gemini 1.0, Pro scores 79.7, and GPT-4 V Turbo scores 75.7. So, it really beats everyone in this benchmark. It also scores 90.8, which is pretty amazing. 
Next benchmark is the Math Vista benchmark. As the name suggests, it is a mathematical benchmark. In this benchmark, it scores 44.5, while Claude 3 Haiku scores 33.2, Gemini 1.0, Pro scores 35.0, and GPT-4 V-Turbo scores 47.5. So, in this benchmark, it beats Claude 3 Haiku and Gemini, but it couldn't beat GPT-4V. But, considering its size, it's pretty amazing. The next benchmark is InterGPS, which is a data set of geometry problems. So, in this benchmark, it scores 38.1, while Claude 3 Haiku scores 32.1, Gemini 1.0, Pro scores 28.6, and GPT-4 V-Turbo scores 41.0. So, in this benchmark, it also beats Claude 3 and Gemini, but it still couldn't beat GPT-4V. Anyway, the next benchmark is the AI-2D benchmark, which is a diagram understanding question set. In this benchmark, it scores 76.7, and in the Claude 3 Haiku benchmark, it scores 60.3, and then Gemini 1.0 Pro scores 62.8, and GPT-4 V-Turbo scores 74.7. So in this one, Phi 3 Vision beats all the other models. Pretty cool. Then, there's the Chart QA benchmark, which is a question data set about understanding charts. In this benchmark, it scores 81.4, and Claude 3 Haiku scores 59.3, Gemini 1.0, Pro scores 58.0, and GPT-4 V-Turbo scores 62.3. In this benchmark, it also beats other models. Pretty amazing. The next benchmark is the Text VQA benchmark. Text VQA is a data set to benchmark visual reasoning based on text in images. Text VQA requires models to read and reason about text in images to answer questions about them. In this benchmark, it scores 70.9, while Claude 3 Haiku scores 62.7, and Gemini scores 64.7, and GPT-4 V-Turbo scores 68.1. So, in this benchmark, it also beats everyone. Pretty cool. Now, the final one is the Pope benchmark, which is used for evaluating object hallucination in large vision language models. In this benchmark, it scores 85.8 while Claude 3 Haiku scores 74.4, and Gemini 1.0 Pro scores 84.2, and GPT-4 V-Turbo scores 83.7. In this benchmark, it again beats all of them. Pretty cool. So, overall, it's great in benchmarks, considering its very low size. Now, let's go ahead and give it a try. The Phi 3 Vision model is available on Hugging Face. So, if you want to use it locally, then you can get it downloaded and use it from there. The new model is not yet updated on Olama, so once it's updated over there, then you can use it through Olama as well. They also have a demo hosted on the Azure AI Studio. So, I'll be using that to check it out. I'll be using the questions that were shared by the Grok team for their evaluation. They are a good standard of questions for multimodal models. I'll also be sending the same set of questions to GPT-4.0 as well, to check how it performs in comparison to a state-of-the-art model. I don't think this will be a fair comparison, because GPT-4.0 is well over 500 billion parameters, while this model is only 4 billion parameters. But still, it will be cool to see how it performs in comparison. Anyway, the first one is the writing code from a diagram test. We'll be sending both the LLMs this diagram, and we'll check if it can write Python code for it. Okay, so this is the response from Phi3. And I must say, this is really cool. It understands the stuff pretty well, and the code it generates is also pretty efficient. I mean, it writes the code inside a function, which is really cool for it to do for modularity. 
Now, let's send the same thing to GPT-40. So, this is the response by GPT-40. As you can see, it's also cool. But, it writes it as a whole program, instead of writing a function like Phi-3. So, I think the winner in this question is Phi-3. So, it's off to a very good start. Now let's send the second question. This is a little complicated, because this also requires reasoning. In this question, we'll send this image and ask how many calories are in five slices of this. The correct answer should be 100 calories. Now let's check the answers. So, Phi 3 fails in this question. It says that there are only 20 calories in five slices, which is obviously not the correct answer. I even tried giving it hints, and it still didn't get it. So, it's just limited in the training data set, I believe. Now, GPT-40 excels in this. It gives a fully formulated response and gives the correct response. So, GPT-40 wins this. Now let's check them with the next question. The next question is explaining a meme. We'll send this meme and ask if it can explain it. Let's look at the answers. Phi 3 is very poor in this. First of all, it thinks it is inappropriate to answer this question. I don't know why. And it thinks that this is some kind of serious depiction. And it cannot understand that it's a meme. So, it's very poor in this question. Now let's send the question to GPT-40. As you can see, it explains the meme pretty well, as expected. So, this one just goes to GPT-40. Now let's send the next question. In this one, we'll ask it to convert this table screenshot to CSV. Now, as you can see, Phi 3 gives a correct response. So, in this one, it passes. Now, let's send the same thing to GPT-40 and check if it works. As you can see, it also gives a similar response. So, this one goes to Phi 3. Pretty cool. Now, we'll send this question to both the LLMs. This question is an image of multiple objects on a table, and here we ask the LLM which object is bigger, the pizza cutter or the scissor. This question also gives three options to the LLM. The correct answer should be answer C, which is, they are about the same size. Now, let's check the answers. Phi 3 says that answer A is correct, but it is not correct. So, Phi 3 fails in this. Now let's check the GPT-40 answer. And as you can see, it gives the correct answer, which is answer C. So, this one goes to GPT-40. Now the last question is the driving test. Here, we'll give it this image and ask where the car can go from here. We'll also give it three options. The correct answer is answer A, which is turn left. Now, let's check the answers. Phi 3 gives a correct answer in this, which is answer A. So, Phi 3 is good in this question. Now let's look at the answer from GPT-40. Just as expected, it also gives the correct answer pretty well. So, overall, it's a really great model. I mean, you can run it even on mobile phones, which will surely help for upcoming AI assistance and whatnot. You can also use it easily on your laptops, which is going to be really great for on-device inference. I really like this one. I'm really going to use it. Go ahead and give it a try, and let me know your results in the comments. Also, if you liked this video, consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below this video. Also, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye.